taking is just one word that describes the Oxford Golf and Country Club. Isn't that a rather picturesque 18-hole scenic golf course situated on the outskirts of Pune? Hello and welcome to Tea Time today with me, Cheti Narula, from a rather windy and a slightly drizzly day. But what the heck, we love our game of golf regardless. Joining me today on the show is a man who started his career off with Mudra, went on to ONM, and now he's the CEO of Bates, Sanjay Thapar, to discuss the advertising industry in much detail. On the show this week, we have Sanjay Thapar, Group CEO, Bates CHI and Partners India. Uh, for the first couple of months, I hated the game because I just couldn't connect the ball to the club. And I used to feel frustrated that how can that little ball with a club in my hand, which is not even moving, you can't blame anything and you just can't hit the ball. In news, Mark Webb beats Bernard Langer on fifth playoff hole to win Senior British Open. And Brand Sneaker wins Canadian Open for second title of the season. Welcome to Tea Time. Hi Chaiti, how are you? Wonderful weather actually, it's rather picturesque golf course. I haven't seen something like this in the Absolutely. country. Absolutely. As I was driving down, I was actually thinking it's one of the most beautiful courses I've seen actually. It's really nice. So somebody like you who belongs to the advertising sector, of course, it's a nice time to play golf, think about campaigns, Anytime. get a little creative. Absolutely. And this is the best place I think to work out of as well for a creative man like you. Totally. I think what it does is actually just takes everything away from your mind. It just declutters it Isn't completely. It? Uh, it makes you just slow down, it makes you think and it just makes you be within yourself, you know, so it's really nice. So now let's talk about the advertising industry. The advertising industry now means serious business. We're talking about sizable growth figures for the industry as right. well. So much so that the industry sees a lot of potential to grow in the future. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, what happened is there was a fair amount of growth which was happening in the industry at very, very high pace up up till 2008. Uh, I think then it slowed down a bit, which is this right. crisis of 2008 and 2009. Uh, when, 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 we, when we went into uh, a kind of a slowdown and a recession which happened when it hit uh, the US market and then the European markets. So it, it did definitely impact uh, the industry. It went up a little bit and I think it's been a little flat from 2010 to 2013 as of right now. Uh, right. So it's been slightly flat. Uh, it's, uh, when I'm saying flat means it's, 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 it's actually relatively lower growth rates than what used to happen. So it's still growing. It's still growing at 9 or 10%. But it's obviously much lower than uh, what we used to think earlier. And I think uh, what, what's happened is, uh, is, uh, is a lot of the sectors who've actually gone through pressures of margin, either because of inflation or because of the dollar prices, uh, have, have actually suffered a lot. Would you, would you say it's, it was a bubble that was waiting to uh, burst? No, I won't put it as a bubble, actually, honestly. I think what has happened at that time, there was, a, there was an excitement uh, and, and there was a belief of complete optimism uh, that nothing can go wrong, this country is protected. And I think people probably forgot uh, as they were going along that, uh, you know, the country is now far more open than what it used to be. And uh, uh, you're, not, you're, not, you're not isolated from the global economy anymore. So something which happens somewhere does affect your life. As players in the industry, the advertising agencies expecting this kind of slowdown to set in, were you all prepared for it or did it come up as a surprise? If you ask me honestly, were there cues of this happening in the global world and, and, and therefore somewhere it's going to hit us? I think yes. Uh, did, were we immune to it or, or completely ignorant of it? No. no. Uh, but but honestly, but I think but, but, but I think the, yeah. But I think the belief was that that probably is not going to impact in that way. And to that extent, I don't know whether we were we were preparing in advance for it or not, or at least lots of industries mm -hmm. were. Some did. And it's like every industry, you know, there's there's a cycle of six or seven years when there's a boom and a growth, and then there's a kind of a relatively slower growth or a relatively slower um, growth rates which happen. But as we stand today, yeah. and I'd like, because we're standing on a golf course as well, the industry is teeing off again. Yes, it is. I think so. And on that note, it's time for me to tee off as well. We'll continue our discussion. Great. 
Nice shot. Thank you. When it suddenly started getting sunny, such is life as well. I Unpredictable. Know. Absolutely. It rains sometimes, it sunny sometimes, but you have to be prepared for all. I can see you are wearing uh, a nice waterproof and a sweatproof shirt, <laughs> golfing shirt as well. Very well prepared. Yeah. So am I actually. Now, is television losing its market share of around 40% industry average? This is the time I want to get candid with you about it. I, I don't know whether it's losing its market share or not. Right. I think definitely there are other mediums which are catching on. Right. Uh, in, in, for various reasons. Right. Uh, and I think one of the biggest reasons in my mind is the way the consumer is uh, today consuming uh, or um, using media uh, right. or, or different media which is available hmm. is actually impacting a lot hmm. uh, in, in terms of how, how, how the consumption of media is happening. Right. Uh, so, so there is a role which television is still playing and it's, it is a large um, part of the industry and it probably will remain large for so a while. So television is increasing, it's declining? See, if you take it from a pure percentage point of view, I think the growth pure rates in digital, digitals, etc. is much higher currently. The digital mediums are much higher. That is a comparison. Absolutely. But if Having you take it pure that, from the size and you take the volumes, for it to catch up with television may still take a long time. I think what is going to happen, in, in, in my mind at least and the way I would see it, uh, if collaboration is becoming the key for agencies to deliver better value to clients and, and better business to clients, and that's going to be the, the future. I think coexistence. When you say collaboration, you mean convergence of all these mediums? Not necessarily. It could be collaboration of expertise. It could okay. be collaborations of okay. services. It could be collaboration okay. of different kind of uh, experiences which you ge generate with the consumer. Right. Because I think what's happening is clients are getting more and more conscious right. of the ROI. Right. Uh, so they are like they are starting to seek what's right. what what delivers more value to them. And, right. and therefore, adding value to, to the consumer's life is mm -hmm. actually the most probably critical and important aspect mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of one's business. Right. Similarly, I think what's happening from a media perspective, as consumers' media habits are changing, mm -hmm. I think it's probably time for, for media uh, to, to reinvent themselves. Right. Uh, and what's happening, for example, in even television, one is the digitization, mm -hmm. the other is the regionalization. Right. And I think the same thing is happening with print also. So if they start re-engineering the roles which they play in consumers' life, I think the relevance will come back in some form and it will continue to see some amount of growth. But it will not be in this typical original form like it used to be. And I think it's a time for reinvention both for media and for agencies. And I think that's what's probably the most most important and most so exciting period. we're on period. some kind of a tipping point right yes, now, isn't it? Yes, I think so. I think, I think, I think exciting time, period yeah. for the media as well. Absolutely. So what is the future? Di digital, print, radio, television, out of home. What is the clear future that will lead the pack? It may sound cliched, but to my mind, I think ideas are going to be more critical than the medium. That's a very politically it, correct No, it's answer. not a politically correct item. If you think of it, there are lots of brands which have re-engineered themselves because of consumer experiences. Right. And I think ideas which deliver consumer experiences, mm -hmm. deliver the right content so that the brand fit happens with the consumer, will, will dominate uh, in the future. Will television play a role in creating those experiences? Yes, it would. Would out of home play a role? Yes, it would. But if you if you see the younger audience as you go along, I think digital is going to drive the future. You're because like such, a true advertising. No, but it's true because if you see the young, look at my daughter. She's 17 years old. I don't think she sits and watches television except for one or two programs that we are watching. Does she see those same programs? Of course she does. She sees every single program, but she downloads them, she buffers them, and then she sees it at her time. I think it's a question of reinvention. Okay. Uh, so you, you have to it's find a different role. Yeah. yeah so, so in the traditional form, we used to say television is going to drive awareness and out of home is going to be a reminder medium. Does that work in this manner? No. Out of home in some cases, brands have been built on out of home. Look at Max uh, before it became Vodafone or Hutch. It was built on yeah. outdoor. Yeah. Uh, Disney as a brand was built on word of mouth without any television or without any digital at that point of time. But the big difference is happening, content is traveling. It's traveling far faster. As you're speaking to me, as you put this episode, it'll be somewhere else. Right. And before you know it, it's not restricted to the geography or the, or the medium and what you used to be watching it. Right. And I think that's changing. So you have to be conscious that that social significance or the social movement of content, of conversations, of engagement are going to travel faster. They're going to travel across the globe. Uh, and they're not going to be restricted to a geography or a place. And the moment every single medium realizes that and then adapts themselves to it, I think there will be a role. Back to what you're best at advertising. Now, there are statistics enough to prove uh, that are setting eyeballs gazing and there's been some remarkable work that has come out of the Indian advertising industry. So much so that we've pulled out 
a lot of concepts and a lot of campaigns which are internationally acclaimed as well. Right. Which ones would you think have been the masterpieces of the Indian advertising industry? Well, to, to my mind, in the last couple of years, I think uh, three or four pieces defined, the three or four visible pieces I think defined. I think the Happy Dent White, which was there, was I think extremely nice. I think the Shubharam was is beautiful because I think it comes from a very, very true human insight. It connects with the These consumers a lot. These are the masterpieces of Indian advertising. Would you I say? think so, because from a visible work, as I said, uh, from a point of view. Uh, but if I if I come into the area of the space of the new age, which mm. is which is the digital etc., I think we've got far to go. I can't see a piece of work which I've seen coming out from India from in the in the digital space, which I can say wow. Indian advertising has not been able to produce the masterpieces in your opinion. I think what happens is when you come to television, uh, in a lot of cases we lack big budgets and execution, and I think right. that's where we fall short. Right. When it comes to design and print, I think Indian has Indian advertising has made its mark. We've won a couple of film crafts, if I remember correctly. Uh, but when you see the work which is out in the market on, on brands, uh, very often it actually probably falls short from any international expectations of execution. And I think a lot is to do with the time frame. Uh, a lot of international awards, at least from whatever I speak to production houses or my credit partner speaks to production houses, is they have a fair amount of time to plan, execute and even the budgets. And when they get into big budgets and execution, the nuances, the, the mm. small little bits mm. which, which add that value, uh, do make a lot of difference right. and I think that's where probably we, we could make a difference if we, if, we, if we got the support. So television clearly holding the fort right there, digitization of course catching up with television as well. Creativity in the Indian advertising sector has a long way to go before it hits the international standards. We will remain in conversation with the CEO of Bates on the Indian advertising sector on the other side of this break as well. Good time now for us to take a breather. Sanjay and I will see you on the other side. Thank you for staying with us on Tea Time. Now the dark clouds are playing a bit of a hide and seek with us, but amazing weather right here at Oxford Golf and Country Club in Pune. Sanjay, let's talk about the regional markets a little bit. Advertisers are now finding more value from the regional markets as well, purely based on the basis of revenue. We also have big uh, media houses that are cherry picking acquisitions in the regional market as well. Do you see that this trend is here to stay? Yes, I think so. Uh, when we talked about the phase three licenses, we talked about the cities. Uh, yeah. which, which are gaining traction. We talked about regionalization of media and consumption habits uh, getting more and more local. Uh, one, of our, one of our recent new business wins actually came on the back of understanding the consumer at the local level. Uh, when we won the Uninor business recently, a client came back and told us, your understanding with the consumer at those respective locations, so the Gujarat consumer is different from the UP East or the UP West consumer as opposed to a Maharashtra consumer, uh, and, and whether, you, whether they have the same brand value or the same, same statement of Sabse Sasta or the same content, mm -hmm. uh, but how do you interpret it in that local language makes such a difference. Right. So therefore, you start suddenly seeing the market as six, six countries rather than it being one player which is a national player. Right. And I think some of those things are gaining traction more and more, how mm -hmm. close you get to the consumer. And therefore, I, I definitely feel either the smaller cities or the regionalization of media is, is here to stay. Uh, because it gives you far more focused reach. You see a lot of films are building the regional pipeline as well. Even that's something based on the same phenomenon that you just explained about the regional markets? I would tend to think so. If you see India, uh, Bollywood does dominate a lot of trends and what you see in Bollywood is actually coming from deep cultural uh, truths and, and which exist. True. And that's a learning for us. So if you actually see a, so much of regionalization happening in television, mm -hmm. uh, it, it is it definitely uh, forebodes the fact that regionalization is important, it is here to stay, and you cannot neglect the fact that you have to get more and more local to understand the consumer in, a, in, in great depth. Sanjay, I had Rohit Ori on the show earlier from Densu India who made a wonderful ad campaign for Tea Time that said putting things into perspective and that also the ball it goes around the lip out it was a very interesting campaign. If I had to ask you to make one ad campaign for Tea Time what would it look like? Driving into the future. 
driving into the future, that's wonderful. And would that be digital print? What what kind of medium are we looking at? So well, I'm talking to a television channel, so I have to say television, but <laughs> okay. also digital, definitely. So that's a caption for us, driving into the future, and we will be driving into the present as well with our game, of course, on the other side of this break. It's a good time now for us to take a breather. Sanjay and I will see you on the other side. Welcome back. We're still tuning into Tea Time and we're in conversation with Sanjay Thapar, who is the CEO of Bates. Now, the DS rollout, the 4G licensing policy. Also, we've got the Phase 3 licensing in radio, all of it setting a stage for a growth spurt in this sector. What are the other policies, in your opinion, that are setting stage and aiding this growth spurt? See, I, I think all these three policies have a very important role to play. Uh, first of all, uh, from DAS rollout, I think the whole content which is available then on demand to the consumer, uh, whether it's the user experience from an HD viewing point of view, uh, then when you come to the phase three license, the excess of the kind of content which will be available now down the towns, all these will give a spurt to the to the business itself. Right. And when the medium grows, our industry grows. Right. And, and that's actually a huge, huge benefit for, for us. But I think yeah. most importantly, I think if you yeah. see these regulations as well as uh, some of the other things which even we do as an industry, right. which is the whole ASCII code of conduct uh, in terms of advertising agencies mm -hmm. and how they should advertise and how ethical mm -hmm. they should be, all are coming from a consumer perspective. And that's right. the great thing to see. Right. Because they're coming from a consumer experience perspective, right. they're coming right. from a consumer benefit perspective. Right. And I think that's going to make a huge difference to our industry. Now, what kind of policy and regulations, in your opinion, need the right kind of government attention, whether it is a lax on the entertainment tax structure or whether it is government coming in aid of uh, academics by providing the right kind of skill, manpower to the media industry as well. Where do you think the government needs to step in more? Honestly, if you ask me, I think talent has been the biggest issue for this industry in the past couple of years. There has been an erosion of talent and I don't think talent has reduced. I think just the options for people have increased and suddenly there is a dearth of people compared to the number of options and the number of opportunities which exist. Yeah. It's good from a people point of view and right. it's actually helping them. Right. But from an industry point of view, talent is getting divided into various right. places. So I think anything in the area of education and building the talent for mm. the industry mm. uh, is going to go a long way in, right. in, in developing the industry. Which ones have been your landmark campaigns of late? Once you joined Bates? I think uh, two or three things. Uh, I don't know whether you call them landmark or not, but I think two or three extremely good campaigns, I think, and for different reasons. So from a television perspective, again, because we are on a television show, I think the general insurance campaign was actually fantastic. Uh, we did a campaign for um, building up the demand for the industry across general insurance, which the penetration is very low, uh, and getting people to agree and getting a unified platform across all the insurance sectors like right. motor insurance, health right. insurance, etc. was right. difficult. And it was a very interesting, simple insight. Right. It said life can deal you a bad hand and, and you can't stop fate. But all you can do is rewind it through insurance. It will so give you lovely. something back. So that was very nice. Then I think the recent work which we did for Tang was very interesting because sampling was such a, such a difficult task. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm deliberately saying this because this is now in the idea space that I talk about. And there are two things we did over there. One, every time you, you, you sample a, a glass of Tang, uh, somebody had to sample it outside, you had to set up a stall, then the consumer would go inside, whether the consumer bought Tang or not, you couldn't check the basket, so difficult. So all we did was create a simple rocket man promotion. Mm -hmm. So the guy carried it on the back of his back, gave you a sample, and if you wanted to buy it, gave you a prac there and then, which worked beautiful. We even did it during the Ramzan period at Mohammed Ali Road, which, was, which, which went a long way. It gave them a sales spot of about 30%. And the other interesting thing we did was in some of the modern trade, uh, and some uh, traditional trade, uh, the larger formats, where we actually had a juice bar. So it was a display of Tang in the daytime, and the whole half the piece would come out and would change, change the other way around, right. and it would be a juice bar for free sampling. Right. And so it, th the good thing was you didn't have to pay for rental of the space. The consumer got a taste of the medicine. It changed to a juice bar in the evening, and during the daytime, it was actually a display. So it worked for the retailer point of view, it worked from the brand point of view, and it worked from a sampling point of view. You think suits are passe in advertising? I would hate that thing. Uh, I don't think so. I think every single 
force in an organization again has a role to play. Mm. Uh, I think in the traditional form, suits mm. were seen as sellers of communication. Right. I think suits need to now understand the clients are looking at value addition, and they need to start understanding business uh, issues of clients more than brand issues and the communication issues alone, and then come back with solutions which are communication so solutions but actually help the business. So I think suits will need to reinvent their their role of actually adding value from a business perspective uh, to the clients. Uh, and that's what that that's that's what we've been doing actually within Bates also. Okay, let's Sanjay. Let's talk about golf and you. When did you take on to this game, and how much do you enjoy golf? About four or five years back, uh, 2008, 2009, towards the end of 2008. So four or five years back, somehow I got into this game. I think I was kind of forced into it with my wife, saying at least there's something which you should play, which will carry on for Your the rest of the life. Your wife plays as well. She used to. She she stopped now because of a bad back. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's the one who forced me into it. Uh, she didn't know that I'll get so hooked on to it that it'll be probably a, a bad thing for her when I disappear <laughs> on the weekends. But I enjoy the game. I love it because I think it's so counterintuitive to our work and our, and our otherwise life. And it teaches you a lot. And that's why I just love this game. It's getting a bit chilly right now, but nevertheless, it doesn't impact us liking golf as well. Uh, tell me a little more about where all have you travelled, which corporate tournaments have you played, your journey that has been from the start to finish of golf. Well, I said I started off in 2008. Uh, for right. the first couple of months, I hated the game because right. I just couldn't connect the ball to the club. And I used to feel frustrated that how can that little ball with a club in my hand, which is not even moving, you can't blame anything and you just can't hit the ball. But I think that was just one right day when on the range you started connecting most of your balls. Yeah. Uh, and that's when you just started loving the game. Then I started going to the course. So I learned it. I think that's when you get the right kind of technique is when you don't have to use that much force as well. Absolutely. And I, think, so and I think that's what think the golf teaches you. And that once it's you not hit about that right shot, speed. there's no yeah. stopping you. Absolutely. So it's, Based it's, on it's, my personal experience. As I, I said, yeah, that. absolutely. It's completely counterintuitive. So, you know, if life is all about speed, power, quickly, let's do things. Right. This is all about slow down. It's right. all about rhythm. Right. It's about negotiating the course. It's about playing to your own strengths uh, and and knowing where to miss and where not to miss, uh, and managing all of that. And as I keep telling a lot of people in my office, you know, no matter how skilled or talented you are, you'll sometimes land up behind the woods. I think that's the time bravado <laughs> doesn't work. You have to start using sensible, practical play out. And I think golf teaches you how to get out of situations which are tricky. All right, Sanjay, on that lovely note, thank you so much for joining me. It's been thank a rather interesting day. There was sun at some point. There was It started getting chilly. It's drizzling. Of course, the rain gods, of course, playing hide and seek with us. On that note, it's a wrap from Sanjay and me, Chaiti Narula on Tea Time. I will see you next week again with another interesting guest from another interesting sector. And as Sanjay puts it, until then, we'll keep driving into the future. <laughs>